How's it going YouTube? Cody Bernardi here with another YouTube video. Today's video we're going to be doing a little bit of business intelligence gathering using various tools that I talked about in my previous video on just random OSINT tools. Now you might have noticed in this video I have my camera over here instead of back behind my monitors like they usually are. Uh, I'm deciding to do this because it's a little annoying trying to work with a camera that's behind me with the controls on the back of it. So let's set up a, a scope or I guess some rules for us. So we're not gonna be doing anything that can trigger any sort of logs, IDS or anything like that. The whole purpose of doing passive OSINT gathering or intelligence gathering is to not trigger anything that could alert that we are doing any sort of OSINT gathering. So we're not going on websites that are owned by that domain directly we might we might leverage some tools that are online to, to access some of these documents and such like that uh, but we're not going to trigger any sort of alarms so so the first thing that we want to do is figure out what the bgp asn numbers are now or as numbers are so asn is autonomous system number so an autonomous system is a collection of connected internet protocol routing prefixes under the control of one or more network operators on behalf of a single administrative entity or domain that presents a common clearly defined routing policy to the internet. So that's what we're going to do. So we're going to go ahead and go to, uh, we're just going to type in BGP HE. So HE is Hurricane Electric. And basically their tool is you could type in an organization's name and get their autonomous system number. So our example today is going to be University of Washington. So Hurricane Electric is going to go through and it's going to check, okay, what are the ASNs associated with University of Washington? In this case, we have Autonomous System 73 and Autonomous System 64247. We're going to go ahead and copy this Autonomous System number and go on to Shodan.io. So we're going to do the search parameter ASN colon and then we're going to put in the autonomous system number with the as in front of it so in this case it's autonomous system 73 and then here we go 11,979 results for uh, devices in university of washington so what we could do with shodan it's actually kind of nice because while yes the as might be or the as uh, organization might be university of washington if shodan interprets it as like u-dub or something like that we want to use that so we're going to go ahead and copy the organization name, or you can just type it in, and using the org, um, the org search parameter in Shodan, we could just do org University of Washington, and make sure you put those in quotations. Go ahead and hit search, and it's going to look up all of the AS uh, numbers associated with University of Washington, and in this case, we're going to get more results. And now we have 12,052 results. So not that many more results, but still it's more data to, to go through. So now what we can do is we have 3,200 3, HTTP ports, uh, 2,000 HTTPS ports, you know, 1,700 SSH ports. So I want to find obscure ports. Now I'm not going to specifically go through, but I'm just going to show you how to filter out ports uh, using Shodan. So go ahead and hit space and then type in minus and you can do minus port 80 colon, uh, colon, sorry, comma 443 22 80, 80 and hit search so now you're going to get the results that do not have those specific ports and it's going to only show you other random ports so now that we have covered bgp and shodan let's do a little google dorking so google dorking is basically using google to specify what exactly you want to look at so if we do university of washington and search it on google we get washington.edu, we get wikipedia, gohuskies.com, so on and so forth. We want to filter our results down to specifically the domain washington.edu. As you do site washington.edu. So now we're getting results specifically to washington.edu, including its subdomains and its other directories. So we have 2.2 million results here. And with the site washington.edu, now we have 1.5 million results. So, so if we want to find, uh, let's say, PDFs on that website, you could do the uh, search parameter EXT. EXT stands for extension. So we could do PDF, and now we have 265,000 results on washington.edu, and these are PDFs. Again, we want to avoid creating any logs on Washington's site. View PDFs online. 
PDF escape, load PDF from internet. And we're gonna go ahead and load this up. So we are leaving logs, but we're leaving logs through the PDF escapes website. So now in this case, we have the domestic and international effects of interstate blah, 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 blah. Now let's do in text. So in text is going to search for anything that's crawled uh, on websites. So we're gonna be looking for PDFs in washington.edu that have, that have the string cybersecurity in it. So now we have 394 results of PDFs in washington.edu's uh, domain that have cybersecurity in it. So let's do copy link location, go back to PDF escape and load PDF from internet. And then there you go, you can view and do whatever you need to do. Now it's not only um, PDFs that you could do, you could do XLS for Excel spreadsheets, phone directory, that's a good one right there. And I believe you could do cached. So this is another tool. So instead of clicking on that link, so if I was to click on this link right here, it will take me to depts.washington.edu. That's gonna leave a log on washington.edu servers. However, you could click on cached, meaning you're accessing the cached version of that website on Google servers. So you're not having a direct link to that website, but you still get to view uh, the data within that site. So that's, the, that's a cool thing. So now we have a bunch of phone numbers and people's names and such like that. So that's Google dorking. And then there's a lot more to it. I could probably make like a whole like tutorial on Google dorking in itself and GitHub dorking, uh, but let's keep going on. So let's go to Google Maps. So, so Google Maps, obviously, it's a good tool to use for when you're doing OSINT because if you want to, you know, take a look at the, what the business looks like from the outside, uh, you can go ahead and get street views, historical views. Uh, you can also use things like Bing Maps. So the cool thing about uh, Bing Maps, other than uh, outside of Google Maps, is that they have the, what do they call, bird's eye view. Bird's eye view is legit photos taken from an airplane. So in this case, we could see... Okay, I think this is the red square, I think they call it. And it's pretty nice. You know, I like bird's eye view if, if it's available. Uh, Google Maps, of course, you have the street view. Bing Maps also has that as well. Uh, but you could go ahead and drop it down and kind of get a view of how everything looks like, you know, what buildings are of interest. Um, and yeah, you can jot down things from there. It, it's, it's not like an unknown, like I just revealed Google Maps or anything like that. So the next one is an interesting one and I really love it. LinkedIn is the worst, or <clears throat> is a gold mine of intelligence gathering on businesses. Now let's go ahead and just look straight into it. So before I get into this, you should invest in a uh, LinkedIn gold or premium account because it does not leave logs that you have viewed someone's uh, LinkedIn account. You can view people's LinkedIn's, gather your intel, and it does not tell them. So let's go ahead and search University of Washington on LinkedIn. Now we're going to get a bunch of alumni and such like that. We don't want to look at alumni. We want to look at employees. Okay, and people. And then we're going to go current companies, University of Washington, and apply. So now all of these results, all 24,000 results, are going to be people that work at University of Washington. Uh, and you know, senior AI director, blah, blah, blah. You could go ahead and view their profile and just read a little bit more about you know, what exactly they do there. So LinkedIn is a good tool, leverage it. Another place that people don't really look, but you should is the, the business's job openings. If you go to a job opening, it tells you all about you must know this, blah, 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 blah. And they go down the line. It's like, okay, well, I know what software you use. I don't even have to ask. Now, in this case, we are leaving a paper trail that we are viewing their website. However, viewing a something like this shouldn't be out of the norm. However, if you want to take that extra step on being super secret, you could go ahead and, you know, view it through Tor uh, requirements, voucher's agree, desired. Now, desired is exactly where you want to look because it's like, okay, this is specifically what we want to look for. So we could see that they use AWS, GCP and Azure, Angular and React, RESTful APIs, uh, Amazon SNS and SQS. So, and you can just go through their entire listing. So now to top this whole video off, I want to talk about a lovely tool called Maltego. So Maltego is an information gathering tool. Uh, you can 
download all these transforms that you can see right here, but basically it takes very little data and kind of expands on it. In this case, we're gonna go ahead and download the Multego Community Edition. Uh, I'll put a link down to that in the description once it's downloaded and you have a Shodan account, install the Shodan transform, put in your API key, and we'll go ahead and start a new, we're gonna put in AS right here. In the autonomous system that we were looking at earlier, we're just gonna put 73 right there. And check this out, you right click and run all transforms. Run. And then we're getting some data right here. So we have a bunch of net blocks in here. Uh, and then now we have uh, some phone numbers, uh, the organizations uh, with some network interface cards, uh, some email addresses, some domain names. Uh, so let's go ahead and run a transform, let's say on this. We'll pull some data down and, you, and it'll get to like specific people too, which is kind of interesting. But you can see it kind of maps everything together. Uh, anyways, that's it for this video. Hopefully you guys found some new information in here that you didn't know prior. Uh, if you can, give this video a thumbs up. It means a lot to me. If you can subscribe and share this with 10,000 of your friends, I would greatly appreciate that. Thank you for watching.